Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, and welcome to Just Paint the Base, the show where I paint stuff on a flat base. I'm going to be doing a grass and dirt themed comic style base for this Lone Guard Infiltrator from Relic Blade. You can see a couple models in the background there, the Bibliothecary and the Warden of Justice that already have this style base done. So I'm just going to be matching the same. I'm going to be starting with some Citadel Rhinox Hide as a base coat for the dirt. Brushing that up with a little bit of Mornfang. That just gives it a nice sort of earthy warm texture. And then for the greens, I'll be using Wog Flesh as the base coat with Warboss Green as a highlight, followed by Scarsnick Green. I'll be adding some small freehand rocky details to the base using Mechanica Standard Gray and a little bit of white mixed in. In this case, I'm using P3 Moro White, but any white will do. Now, I didn't show it here during the intro, but I think it goes without saying I'm also going to be using some Higgins Black Magic to do my comic style lining. So I'm going to begin by just base coating the whole base with Rhinox Hide, and this just gives it a nice, deep, earthy texture. Not even texture, just a color. Now, I could avoid the areas where I want to put the grass, but at this moment, I don't know exactly where those are going to be, so it's just easier to throw down brown everywhere and work the green in later. So now I'm coming in with the Mornfang Brown to add a lighter brown area, and basically that's going to take the form of sort of just like a shaggy, brighter patch of dirt through the middle of the base. And it doesn't really matter what I define as the middle, I just want a little bit of grass on two opposing sides. Now, of course, I don't have the grass down yet. What I'm doing is I'm leaving a dark brown patch where I can work the grass in later. So you can see I'm just kind of taking this kind of scribbly, haphazard, you know, patch of Mornfang through the base underneath the model's legs. Now you can see as soon as I apply the Mornfang brown, I'm also using the same brush to just blend it out by basically just smearing it around at the edges, letting it kind of feather into the Rhinox hide. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be flawless because it's just dirt and we're going to be covering a bunch of it with grass anyway. And speaking of grass, I'm going to start throwing down those Wog Flesh base coats for the grassy areas. Now what I like to do first is just kind of block out the rough shape of the grass and omit what I would consider sort of like the long blades of grass kind of coming off of that. But anything that's going to be just the solid chunk of bright green, I hit now. And in this case, I'm putting one basically kind of underneath each of the model's feet because I've chosen to run that bright patch of dirt between his legs from front to back on the base. Right about here, I decided I wanted a little bit more grass, so I went ahead and just connected the grass from the left and right side of the base across the back, just because. No real reason. So now I'm starting to add a little bit of a grass blade texture to the edges, and I'm just basically using straight pulls of the brush into the grassy areas to get nice long green lines that, you know, form the idea of grass blades. So now I'm going back in with a little bit more of the wog flesh and just adding the rough idea of grass blades to the edge where it overlaps the brown. Now if you're finding that your green is encroaching too much into the brown area, you can reverse this process by just painting the same shapes in brown instead and that'll still give you the idea of tapering green lines because basically what happens is the whole transition ends up becoming more or less a zigzag pattern. So now I'm coming back in with Warboss Green, that's our second green of the three, and I'm going to be adding highlights to the grass blade structure. And that's as simple as painting, you know, tapered lines over top of the you know, hinted grass texture we've already created. I'm also going to fill a little bit of the kind of the bigger bulk areas of the green with some hinted leaf shapes as well. So here, where there's a large area of green, I'm just breaking it up by adding that sort of second level of grass blades to it. You can think of it maybe being like a cluster of weeds or something growing. It really doesn't matter. It's just something to kind of break up the monotony of a big green field. And now to break it up even more, I'm going to go ahead and paint in some rocks using Mechanica Standard Gray. 
I like to add these mostly at the transition between the grass and the dirt, but it's also handy to have these as a tool to just cover up any little mistakes you may have made on the base. With these rocks, I find that they're more visually appealing if they either come in pairs or groups of three. A single rock by itself feels a little bit out of place, but when you've got you know a larger rock with like one or two smaller pebbles near it, it seems more appropriate. So what I've done now is I've mixed a little bit of white into the Mechanica Center Gray just to give myself a bit more of a mid-tone gray. And I'm painting kind of a highlight on the rocks. I'm trying to imagine them as 3D structures and how I might want to paint a highlight on top of them and then just flattening that down. So you can see it's kind of just taking sort of like a letter C shape across the back side of the rock. And the idea there is that that would actually be sort of, you know, the topmost part of the rock with a bit of like a sloped plane facing towards the front of the base. And now we're on to my favorite part of the basing, and that is of course the comic style black lining. So that's busting out my Higgins Black Magic and my Game Envy Artist Arsenal brushes, and just adding all the little black lines that make the details really stand out. For this, I'm using the Game Envy Artist Arsenal Triple Zero brush, and you can save 10% on those at gameenvy.net slash epic duck. Now, I'm a little bit biased towards these brushes because I actually worked with Kit to pick these out for his store. I was using these for my comic style lining before he actually had them in stock. And they've been my go-to brush for about two years now. I can't recommend them enough. So all I'm doing here is working my way around the base, outlining each of the blades of grass. Just, you know, a little thin black line, just both sides of the blade. And just basically creating that sort of zigzag boundary between the dirt and the grass. Also adding a black line surrounding each of the rocks to make them a distinct element, you know, separate them from the grass and so on. That's really what black lining does is it creates a hard break. So even when you've got two adjacent colors, it lets you know that there's just different elements either side of that line. So now I'm going to add a little bit more dimensionality and character to the rocks here by basically just adding a little broken line through the middle, not touching either side. And what that does, it just creates the idea of a facet or a plane on the rock. And we can also use that to drop a little bit of a shadow in if we want to. One other critical step with comic style lining is outlining the character's feet where they meet the base so it's very evident that they are distinct from the base. Same reason we outline between the grass and the dirt. You know, just keeps things that are separate looking separate. So one of the last things I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of surface detail to the dirt part of the base with just a series of small scratches and circles and this gives the impression of maybe, you know, pebbles or little divots in the sand. I'm also going back in and adding outlines around the extra blades of grass I painted over the large open green area. The very last step, of course, is just blacking out the edge of the base. And that's all there is to it. Honestly, the dirt and grass comic style base is one of my favorite ones to paint because it's just so impactful. It does such a good job with so little effort. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Every little bit helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, puts a roof over my family's head and food on the table. You can also join me for live painting shows several times a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios. I'd love if you came by and watched the show sometime and followed the channel. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who supported my content over the years, both past and present. It's been an absolutely wild ride, and I couldn't do this without all the wonderful fans and flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you really make this worth doing. So let's just keep on doing this together, making more content, and just being fantastic together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.